Hi there, this is Charles Goddard. I don't know how exciting this is for you, but uh, I'm attempting to do a video uh, weekly roundup instead of the usual brilliant prose that uh, you can read on the blog. Uh, this video will be on the blog. Uh, first of all, to uh, give you just a little background, which I do every week, and that is that um, this is a continuation of a theoretical trading exercise that was started in my brilliant book, Beginner's Guide to Trading and Investing. The link to that book is uh, either below or uh, above uh, this video. Uh, probably in both places, it's that good. Anyway, uh, what we what we do is uh, we start by we start with a theoretical portfolio of one hundred thousand dollars. We trade five instruments uh, that are uh, they are basically futures, which uh, most people cannot use uh, for assorted reasons in retirement accounts and other accounts that have restrictions. So these five instruments are um, we use uh, e ETFs exchange traded funds as proxies in the stock market for those five uh, instruments so this means now that we can we can be uh, up or down and uh, just we're just buying long I'll expand on that uh, as uh, as we hit the first uh, uh, the first chart so we'll, we're going to start as we usually do with the uh, S&P 500. So this is uh, this is a chart of SSO, and um, it is the proxy for the S&P 500 uh, as uh, in the stock market. So if you were to buy SSO, then uh, it whatever the S&P uh, did it would reflect in the SSO. The uh, advantage is that uh, if the S&P 500 goes up by 1%, the SSO goes up by 2%. And most of the symbols we're using here uh, will do that. Uh, I think the dollar, uh, dollar index is the only one that doesn't. Now you'll see SDS is down. Now what that means is that if the S&P 500 declines, and you own SDS, the SDS will, will rise. In other words, you buy both of these symbols long, but one of them represents the S&P going up, one of them represents the S&P going down. So this means you could take the signals either way, you don't have to be out of the market for, for very long. And it also, in this way, we limit how many instruments or how many stocks we we deal with, uh, so you get to know them pretty well. So uh, what we're going to do is I can tell you that uh, we have an open position in uh, in SSO, and uh, we've got a trailing stop on it, and uh, it continues it continues on uh, until that trailing stop uh, takes us takes us out of our trade. We're going to expand on that with uh, with gold and I'll show you why. So here we have a chart of uh, UGL which uh, represents gold going up. Uh, you can see the the two symbols at the top of the chart. Now I've left the markings from a recent trade in uh, UGL. You can see uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through our, our trading method uh, and it's very very simple. What we're going to do first is identify the trend on the chart and we're going to do that by looking at the uh, exponential moving averages which are the green and the blue and the red line you can see there. The green line is a 55 period moving average, the blue line is 21 and the red is 8. Now I say period moving average because it's dependent on what time frame you're looking at. So we are looking at a daily chart here. So that means that this is this is say uh, 21 uh, daily moving average. So what we do in our in our little system where we're trying to be as objective as possible. In other words, we don't want us making decisions. 
we are inundated with all kinds of advice all over the shop. Uh, I can look down uh, various news feeds and I'm told, hey, gold is going to the moon and uh, we should be loading up on it. And there's all kinds of figures to show shortages and, and that, that uh, the, uh, the futures are going to go crazy in gold. OK, we, we don't worry about that in our system. What we're doing is we're only going to act when we actually see something in our system. We're not going to immediately run out and buy because we've we've heard a lot of stuff that could be just trying to get us going and get us buying uh, on something that really maybe shouldn't be bought. I don't know. But we'll, we'll go through the anatomy of a trade here be, just because it's still marked up from from the trade that we had. So you see the um, the uh, yellow uh, box and uh, this is uh, this is where we we show this uh, in that um, the the blue line the 21 moving average the uh, exponential moving average is above the green which in our world at this moment is one of our definitions of an uptrend so this means we only want to trade with our trend which is up so we only want to go uh, long on this and the long in gold is represented by uh, UGL so UGL is is telling us that it is in an uptrend. All right, so that's good. So now let's look at our trigger. Our trigger is the red line or the price. Now, if those things cross above the blue line, then we are into a trade. OK, so we've got those conditions in that uh, yellow box. The problem is we've got a uh, we've got a resistance. Uh, if we look to the left and uh, over the last two months, we can see a price higher than our, our trigger price, then uh, we want to make sure that price is cleared before uh, we enter into a trade. And there's a little more on that uh, as, we, as we go along. And um, so then we can see in the smaller yellow box where the trade is actually triggered, where we get, first of all, we get a close above resistance. And remember, we want to close we don't want um, we don't want a candle that's uh, jumped above resistance and then scarpered back below. That doesn't help us. We want to close above uh, resistance on our chart. So we get that. Uh, you can see the little arrow telling you that. And then we we get a the price rises above the uh, high of that candle or just above it. I give it a few pennies above the high to put in my stop buy. So now that stop buy is hit, the trade is triggered, and we are in. Our stop loss now goes just below that yellow box, which is just below support, and we make it a trailing stop. Now, as the price moves up, that trailing stop will follow the price and continually anchor the stop at a new high. So if you trail on up to the the high of this chart on the right hand side, the trailing stop has has followed it up. And uh, what we had is as the price fell back, uh, we were stopped out at $75, leaving us with a profit of $10 uh, per share. Now the question then is what when would we when would we get back in? Are we are we going to listen to um, all the all the uh, the news and talking heads and everything? No, we're not. We we want we want our system to be followed. So we want the price to our trigger to go back above the 21 after it is now closed below, and we would have a uh, a new trade in UGL. So that that happened. But if we look to the left, we can see that that high is sitting there. Now that high represents what's called overhead supply. Overhead supply is a, is a level of resistance and it is created by a bunch of people that, that were buying as that high was reached. Now you can, a lot of them will, will want to get out as that price gets back up. To where they got in so all the way up you're going to have a little bit of a struggle as uh, there's a lot of selling pressure there 
and I want that selling pressure to be fully dissipated before we enter uh, another trade. So our new our new resistance becomes the the high on this on this chart, and we're going to want all our conditions fulfilled, and we're going to want that resistance to be closed above before we put in a stop buy on uh, UGL, and that's our position on gold. We're waiting for our process, and we're waiting for that level of uh, resistance to be uh, cleared. All right, let's go on to oil. Okay, so oil is uh, kind of an interesting one because um, as uh, you're probably all aware, it took a huge uh, downturn. And um, you can see now from the chart that it's been basing, consolidating, whatever you want to call it. Now, uh, so we are starting to get uh, closes that are getting close to us being in a trade. Now we need a close above um, the resistance line there and we do have a, a stop buy in and um, when uh, whenever we get in or out of a trade it's detailed fully on this blog so that uh, everyone can can see everything. So if you're looking at the book and uh, there's bits you don't understand you should be able to get it from uh, these trades unfolding and uh, this this blog will continue uh, to um, to trade these five instruments through to the end of uh, 2020 and along the way you can ask me uh, any questions that uh, that you wish now in this case as we're looking at it we can actually see a zone of resistance and to the left, you can see where two black vertical lines have started out. And uh, this is uh, what the Japanese call a falling window. And that is a, a zone of resistance to us. And the upper horizontal line is the, the most important. We need to close above that uh, in order for us to uh, enter a trade uh, to, uh, to represent oil rising. And it's a, right now it is a, a mighty struggle so we'll see what happens there but uh, we're going to we're going to sit and wait till we actually get a trigger to get in on on uh, uh, the up of uh, oil all right so this is uh this is a chart of the dollar index and uh, this one's uh, a little different than the others it's not merely uh, up and down the the dollar index if you're looking at a chart of the dollar index then uh, if it's going up it means the US dollar is is gaining strength against a basket of international currencies and that's represented to you by the UUP um, symbol and uh, if the dollar index is going down then it means that uh, the, uh, the the currency basket is gaining strength against the uh, U.S. dollar, and you would do well to be in UDN, which um, we were in and uh, are still in, as a matter of fact. And uh, you can see all our conditions uh, being met somewhere around position one there, where uh, our um, our blue is above our green and uh, the the red and the price have uh, crossed above the blue and we're set to go and uh, we've got a we've got a level of uh, resistance there we get a close above that and uh, we put in our stop buy at a, a few a, a penny or two above that close and uh, we're in this trade and our trailing stop I believe is around 51 cents behind the trade price and it is following the price up as we go and so far that trade is uh, is still open so this is uh, this is a chart of 20-year uh, treasuries and um, we were in this uh, we were in this uh, uh, trade at uh, at one point and um, but uh, we're we were stopped out you can see that we have uh, nothing going on on the right hand side here 
the, the moving averages are all coming together. So we'll see how that uh, picture uh, clears out and uh, and see if we've we've got a new trade with that. Now you can you can see that um, that what has happened here is that uh, I did make a, a bit of an error with this one, in that um, there was a level of resistance and I shouldn't have gotten into into the 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 trade at all. And you can if you look start at the left hand side, you can see that horizontal uh, black line has uh, has three touches three significant touches on it and uh, that is uh, that that level for some reason and we could probably track back through the charts and probably find that reason but we don't really know we need to know that we if you really want you can go back and take a look and try and figure it out I just it's just not it's just not relevant really because we can see that that is a level of resistance it's a um, it's a it's a barrier to to our trade so even if our moving averages all do their work nicely. Uh, we will not be in this trade until we get a close above that resistance level. Okay, so that's uh, we're coming to the end of uh, our weekly report here, um, and uh, so I want to I want to mention a couple of things, and uh, one is that. Uh, we started this portfolio at the beginning of, of January with $100,000, and it's now sitting at just a little over $140,000 uh, as we speak. Most of that was with uh, one or two trades. Mostly, the we were on the short side of oil when it to drop like a like a stone. And I want to I want to just mention that a little bit right now. Our our system is one where we're we're probing. We're we're taking all trades that our particular uh, process kicks out, and we do that because um, we're going to take a few gains. We're going to take a few losses. All of it is going to stay modest, but there will come the big move, and that's what we are probing for. And uh, so we could end up with three, four, five big moves over the course of a year that makes all the difference in the world, as long as we haven't gotten too attached to our losses. So we're we're pleased so far with the 140,000, but uh, we have to recognize that come the end of the year, we could still be at 140,000 or even have fallen back a little. The thing is, we're not pushing anything. We're letting the market come to us. We're letting our trades come to us. We're not trying to make something happen and this is this is very important and we like i've mentioned earlier we're going to be uh following this system right through 2020 i'm trying to make a, a point and uh most of the time you will see ahead of time where we're going to place our trades in this blog uh which uh may or may, may not continue to be a video version it it depends uh but um if you have any questions about what you've heard or you have any questions at all from the investment world please drop me a line at the email address that is here and i will most happily be uh, i will i will answer them and uh, be glad to do so and uh, so that is uh, that is all from me and uh, so all the best keep an eye on this blog like i said i only i only put um I only, uh, only put new uh, submissions on it when there is uh, a trade during the week with all the details, our, uh, our position size, meaning number of shares, et cetera, our risk management, i.e. Uh, where, where are our stops and, um, and how much of the percent, how much of the portfolio is actually at risk, which is uh, part of our standard uh, process which you can read all about in the book or you can pick up from this blog as we go along up to you and uh, so uh, unless there's uh, unless there's an, an, another transaction during the week i'll see you with our, our weekly roundup uh, next week take care of yourself bye now